Welcome to David E. Hastings Stadium for a Tuesday night matchup between the Guelph Royals and the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Royals the hottest team in the IBL with a four game win streak coming into this game. Meanwhile the Maple Leafs just a half game up on Guelph in the IBL standings that have been quite the log jam of late at least for the top half of the league. Welland finished off a four game skin of their own with a win recently. Sit atop the standings Followed by the London Majors and the Toronto Maple Leafs in third, Guelph in fourth, and the Barry Baycatch just behind them in fifth. So every game in this long 42 game schedule matters. This one even more so than normal. It will be Claudio Custodio starting on the mound for the Royals with the Maple Leafs in town. And we are moments from getting underway. I am Scott Fraser, joined by our color commentary man, Neil Sriwasa. Great to see everyone once again. This is Custodio gets loose here. Going to be a great matchup. Zach Sloan on the hill for the Maple Leafs against Custodio here. Not much better than you can get on a Tuesday night here at Hastings Stadium. Not even a little bit. And we, Neil, have been blessed with great days for baseball and even better evenings. A perfect night to take in a game here at Hastings Stadium, just adjacent to Exhibition Park in the heart of downtown Guelph as Custodio does loosen up here. We will run through the lineup for the visiting Maple Leafs in order. We have Jose Vinicigio and Justin Morrow and John Salazzo to follow as the third hitter to start off this inning. As mentioned, Custodio will start on the mound and he will look to continue what has been an impressive 2022 season with the Royals and Guelph. Happy to welcome back Sean Riley to the lineup. He missed last game. He is batting cleanup as the designated hitter tonight and he is hitting 333 on the season to go in perfect unison with his jersey number 33. For the Royals, a former Maple Leaf is Riley. He played last season in Toronto before coming back home as we get set to get underway. Custodio has been nothing shy of excellent all season long and will look to get ahead in the count as he's done in each and every one of his starts. Custodio sets. Roberts behind home plate, calls a first pitch strike in there to get ahead in the count and bring the hands together here at Hastings Stadium. Over a thousand fans in the seats already with more pouring in as this game has just gotten underway. 
That one misses to even the count at one and one. The one one delivered and hit high to right field and caught by JD Williams out there in the shade. Already making an impact is JD. He's been great at the plate and even better out there at right field to record the first out of this evening's game with Justin Morrow up to bat second for the Maple Leafs. Studio deals as Mara shows bunt a little bit to start his at bat, but takes it away, and that will go for a ball. 1-0 and the count. Mara hitting 306 on the season coming into this one, and that evens the count as he waves at one from Custodio and evens the count at one and one. Mara, 306 on the season. 13 runs scored, 19 for 62 so far. How about approaching the midway point of this 42 game season as Custodio paints the outside corner for strike number two? A lively crowd already here in the top of the first inning. One gone, Custodio the one, two inside and high for ball two to even up the count. Darius Barla starting at third base for the Royals tonight. So Malik Collymore not in his normal spot, which he has been a mainstay for Dino Rommel and the Royals so far this season. Checks his swing, but it doesn't matter. Custodio finds the zone. Two down here in the top of the first inning. A perfect pitch to sit down Mara. That will bring up Salazzo here to try to keep the inning alive for the Maple Leafs. Easier said than done for Salazzo against Custodio, who has really showed no signs of weakness in any of his starts so far this season and has also been a terror at the plate Custodio has when called upon. Salazzo swings and misses at strike number one. Actually, he did get a piece of it, but that will go for strike one. The conductor batting 258 on the year so far. Of course, we call him the conductor because he works for CN Railways overnight. Really a really nice guy. Really devoted to this Leafs organization and everything else. Played with the Hamilton Cardinals when he broke in. He's been a mainstay in the Leafs lineup for at least the last five or six years anyways. And that takes commitment, Neil, as that one gets away from Roberts and bounces to bring the count to two and one. And, yeah, when you're working overnights and then finding a way to make it to ball games on the weekend, it doesn't leave much time for anything else in the summers. That's for sure. The 2-1-2 two, two gone here, top of one, and that will even the count at 2-2. Two and two. And Claudio, again, just always on, it seems, and he is a strike away from getting out of this top of the first quite quickly. Delivers. Got him swinging to end the top of the first in perfect order. Claudio Custodio. One, two, three, go the Royals through the top of the order for the Maple Leafs. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Dalton Pompey, Connor Morrow, and J.D. Williams do up for the Royals in the bottom half of the first.
Back inside a packed Hastings Stadium on a Tuesday night as the Royals went one, two, three through the top of the order for the Maple Leafs. Scott Fraser with you, joined by Neil Srivasta for a classic matchup between the Royals and the Maple Leafs and Dalton Pompey to get it started in the bottom of the first against Zach Sloan, who misses for ball one. Pompey finally settling, settling in here after a few games with his time with the Royals as he fouls that one off into his own dugout. Hop, skip, and jump, and everyone no worse for wear. That will even the count at one and one. Pompey now all of a sudden hitting 340 on the year and a great leadoff man for this Royals lineup that has a ton of power. Sloan delivers the one one and misses well outside. Pompey a patient batter, so definitely wouldn't be taking a chance on that one. And Ahead in the count yet again. Swings to even it up and fouls it off. Two and two. Fans still pouring in here at Hastings Stadium. Well over a thousand in the seats already. That goes to run the count full three and two outside. Well, well outside. Sloan having some location issues to start this game and perhaps some nerves against the former major leaguer Pompey playing a few years for the Blue Jays. The fourth ball of the at bat and Pompey yet again on board by way of walk as he's done so many times so far this season. And that makes the life of Con Connor Morrow batting second just a little less stressful. You know Sloan will have one eye on Pompey over at first. Morrow hitting 258 so far this season, and that came after a slow start, so watch for that number to continue to rise for Morrow, the second baseman. Sloan again misses his own 1-0. and oh. The lefty pitcher Sloan will be able to have a clean line on Pompey over at first, who is no stranger to stealing bags. And he checks him on cue. Much to the jeers of the Hastings Stadium crowd. What if the Bushmen are in town tonight as well? They, they like, they they like to take the trip up to the Royal City. We'll have to see. Of course, if you've ever been to Christie Pitch, you just have to look up the left field line and you'll find the Bushmen in full force. Usually camped up on the hillside. They make their presence known, that's for sure. They're very loud and very proud of their boys. The 3 0 now, Neil. And if you're Connor Morrow, what do you do with JD Williams, who's been hotter than a pistol at the plate, do it behind you and followed by Sean Riley? You pretty much have to take a strike here. He hasn't thrown a lot of them. And that one does paint the outside part of the plate for strike one to run the count to three and one. Morrow gets a hold of one and pulls it down between the shortstop and the third baseman. Pompey to second, Morrow to first, and two on with no one out, and J.D. Williams making his way to the plate. The right fielder, number nine, J.D. Williams. Williams, the right fielder, playing, hitting 263 this season and has just done it all for this Royals team. Sometimes a leadoff man, sometimes a three-hole man, sometimes further down in the lineup. Takes a big hack at that first pitch he sees from Sloan to fall behind 0-1. Well, Sloan has got to have in the back of his mind. I got Riley on deck plus the rest of the order, and Pompey goes on the first pitch. They're going to throw the down double a second. steal. <laughs> Works out. So Pompey takes off, Morrow falls, and the count now one and one with no one at first, and Riley on deck as Neil mentioned. William, William's a good eye to take that one, but it does come in there for a strike. And as Neil mentioned, Sloan having a bit of a hard time finding the strike zone. So Williams chops one between short and third. That one picked up and on to first for the 5-3 put out the first out of the inning. 
but not before Dalton Pompey crosses home to open the scoring for the Royals. And that brings up Sean Riley. Riley, two home runs on the year and 27 at-bats, eight RBIs. Just adding to his career totals that are, with each and every one, a new career and record high here in the IBL. A first pitch cut at the offering from Sloan, missed for strike one. Riley waves at that one. That might have been well outside of the zone from my angle. And 0-2 as a short question for the home plate umpire to make sure that should I have left it? Who knows? But 0-2 the count, one gone. Morrow at second and Terrasano due up next. That one high, one and two. The one, two from Sloan delivered inside, even the count at two and two. And that sun out there at left field, Neil, has been a nightmare for outfielders so far in night games. And right now, very, very much in the eyes of all of the outfielders for the Maple Leafs. Well, exactly. With the exception of the right fielders standing in the shade, the left field and center fielder are just trying to shade their eyes here and trying to read the ball off the, off the bat the best they can here as Riley goes down on strikes. For out number two. Yeah, Riley slightly overzealous on that one, trying to pull, as you mentioned, and unable to do so. Down on strikes, and that brings up Justin and Terrasano, who, as always, exchanging pleasantries with the home plate umpire and the opposing catcher before he gets his night started at the plate. Juicy hitting 295 here on the season. In there for a strike, Sloan ahead in the count. And after what seemed to be what could have been a very, very long bottom in the first, Sloan a few strikes away from getting out of it with just one run surrendered. And now a strike away as that one's in there for strike number two from Sloan. And, and Terrasano takes a step out and probably chokes up a little bit on the bat here to protect the zone. And does exactly that. That one lined a right and caught to end the inning, but again, Dalton Pompey getting aboard by base on balls and coming around to score. We are through one inning here on a Tuesday night at Hastings Stadium. Guelph one, Toronto no score. We are back at Hastings Stadium. Scott Fraser joined by Neil Sriwasa up in the press box and Ada McCaskey 
leading off the top of two after the Maple Leafs went one, two, three in the top of the first inning and Claudio Custodio misses to open up the second inning with a ball. McCaskey ahead in the count. McCaskey batting 309 on the year. Small sample size so far, but yes, you know, he's definitely getting his reps in there and definitely got some patience at the plate here as he's waiting out Custodio now to a 2 and 0 count. Fouls that one off to make it two and one. And yeah, Neil, a small sample size, but not minuscule. 55 at bats and with 14 hits, or 17 hits rather, and he's scored 14 times. So making the most of every single opportunity, as you mentioned. The two one here from Custodio. In there for a strike to even the count at two and two. And McCaskey misses on that one for a, another strikeout for Claudio, who has done that to so many batters so far right, this season, Neil, two. and twice, three times yeah. now, through four tonight. So Claudio seems to be rolling yet again. 83 strikeouts and counting on the year. He's got a, a, a rather large cushion in the strikeout department on the next guy in the, the league stats as well. So Claudio likes to wheel and deal. He doesn't like to get behind the count at all. And gets right ahead in the count, the 0-1 here. That one misses the even the count at one and one. Luca, Luca Boscarino now the batter, the right fielder, batting 265 on the year. As he swings and misses on that one, it's quickly one and two. And as the four batters ahead of him have swinging and missing at Claudio's offerings. So some good pitches from 26 and White so far tonight. And that one just, just doesn't get the call to even the count at two and two. That's one of those calls later in the game you hope Claudio gets just because you know, he's gonna establish that zone out there. So it's more of a show me strike from the um, to the umpire from Claudio on that one. Yeah, and no that questions. one misses as well. Count now full. Now he's got to bring something in the wheelhouse here and hope he doesn't get hit hurt, hit hard here. And on cue, Neil, that one catches him in the head and he will take his base the hard way. Lucas Boscarino aboard for the first base runner as the first base runner for the Maple Leafs tonight. And Grant Timoni so due up. Timoni, their there's, there's Starward second baseman batting 265. He recently bought a house in Paris, Ontario with his fiance. New homeowner, which so many Ontarians have become over the past 20 months or so. And the new owner of a strike one call in this at bat. The 0-1 from Custodio. Slice down the right field line and foul. So 0-2. Oh, Boscarino at first with both feet on the bag at the moment. We'll see how much he moves off here with one gone, trying to avoid the double play ball. The 0-2, oh, swung on and on cue Morrow to two. On to Interesano at first, not in time. So Timoni aboard by way of fielder's choice. Boss Greeno thrown out at second for out number two. Greg Carrington, the center fielder now coming up, batting seventh in the order. And Carrington on the year, hitting 298. With six RBIs and has just done a great job for the Maple Leafs and Topoli so far that are just a half game ahead of the Royals coming into this one. 11 and seven Toronto is so far this season. Guelph one or half game behind at 10 and seven. Stodio deals the first pitch he see, throws the first pitch strike yet again, excuse me. Carrington waving at the first pitch he sees this evening. The 
one makes it 0-2. Carrington laid off, but Custodio found the zone. Claudio looking for his fourth strikeout of the evening. That one popped high to left field. Ethan Hammond under it at the track, makes the catch! and brings the end inning to an end and all 2,000 Royal fans hands yep. together. Guelph with a one nothing lead halfway through two innings. Welcome back to Hastings Stadium for the bottom of the second inning. Scott Fraser with Neil Sriwasa up in the press box and Ethan Hammond to lead it off here in the bottom of two. And Ethan Hammond, the left fielder, a pleasant surprise at the plate for Dino Rommel, Neil. No question about that. Ethan has come in and brought his A game this year. Hitting 345 coming into this one. That a strike from Sloan to get the at-bat underway. Hammond will be followed by Zach Roberts who Noah Roberts, excuse me, who has just been white hot at the plate and Darius Barless will round out the three that are due up. As Hammond fouls that one off for strike number two. Lefty on lefty, Sloan delivers. Hammond protects the zone to stay alive. Fouls it off behind home plate. We'll do it again. Sloan sets, throws, Hammond chops one down the line. That might be just yeah. rolls foul. Sloan patient, and that paid off for the Maple Leafs catcher, or pitcher rather. That one did roll foul. So the count remains 0-2. Hammond back to home plate in the batter's box to try to find a way aboard. Mike from Talk to Sean, yeah. Hammond will take his time, collecting his thoughts and breath, and back to the box and picking up his weapon of choice along the way. Sloan the 0-2 yet again. Hammond chops it foul yet again. I think the biggest uh, adjustment Ethan Hamm has made this year is just, he's kind of hit the pitches where they've been pitched rather than try to take them in the other way as much as he used to in the past. So he's definitely paying off the stays. And, of course, the Royals have been preaching, taking everything to right field as much as possible against a lot of these guys. And to, to a man, they've definitely been doing a, definitely a bigger concerted effort to do so. That one's fouled away again here. And Hammond, as a lefty, has that obvious advantage pulling things to right field as well with that thought in mind. That one again fouled off, so we are still 0-2 well into this plate appearance from Ethan Hammond. 
So if nothing else, doing a good job of showing his dugout and teammates exactly what Zach Sloan is throwing tonight. The 0-2 from Sloan to Hammond, fouled off yet again. Uh, this time down the third baseline and into the beer garden. They reset and try it one more time. Sloan misses one and two now. Roberts very, very loosened up in the on-deck circle. He is due up next. And again, Darius Barless will bat third this inning. And Kyle Cush will round out the order for the Royals and Hammond down on strikes, looking much to the chagrin of the Hastings Stadium crowd. That's one of those pitches you put in your back pocket and you remember for later on, and just, hey, our guy got didn't get that call in the first half, but the, the, the play umpire gave it to him in the second half, here in the home half anyways. Roberts checks for ball one. And Noah's done a great job as a call up here, a catcher and just getting it done in his opportunities at the plate as well. Three home runs for the rookie catcher and huge ones at times, especially a pair back against Barry in their last home game. So impressing time and time again is Noah Roberts at the plate and being the one calling the game for Custodio tonight. Swings and offers and misses at that ball, so a strike two called, or swung on rather, and the count now one and two. One gone here, and Barless awaits his chance. Robert slices that one foul. One, two from Sloan. Gets Roberts looking back to back strikeouts for Zach Sloan. Third baseman, number four, Darius Barless. Darius Barless now to the plate. He is batting eight tonight for Dino Rommel and the Royals. Barless batting 188 on the season. Obviously, not much of a Overly used threat at the plate, but can come through with some clutch hits. And right now would be that time to keep the Royals from going one, two, three here in the bottom of the second inning. Fouls that one off and may, might have caught the Maple Leaf catcher, Justin Mara in the unspeakables. We're gonna give a few minutes to relax here and you know, shake this one off. Make sure he's not seeing stars behind the plate here, but definitely he felt that one. That's that for sure. One visibly <laughs> leaving Mara in a serious amount of discomfort. And yeah. Words were definitely said after that one hit. We will take a quick breath and allow Mara to catch his. And no one wants to see that happen to a catcher. And it comes with the territory, but. Doesn't make it hurt any less if you're Justin Mara right about now. Mara, when he was with the Chicago Cubs organization and their farm team, guess who his roommate was? What year would it have? Well, you probably wouldn't think if a baseball guy, if I gave you, a, if it was a hockey, hockey son of a, of a legacy. Tyler Gretzky would have been his roommate. Yeah, one of the Gretzky boys was, was, was his one roommate. One hint, one guess, one reward. There Those hands are for Justin Mara who gets back to his feet. He's definitely going to need a bag of ice later and probably some Advil. As he will get his gear back on and will remain in the game. And a better man than I, Justin Mara, shakes it off. The count one and one, two gone here. Bottom of two. Barless still at the plate. Sloan looking for his third straight strikeout to go one, two, three here in the bottom of two. Tro Toronto trailing Guelph 1-0. Pompey scored the lone run for the Royals, and that one misses to even the count. Or excuse me, make the count 2-1. and one. 
Kyle Cush is batting ninth for the Royals tonight. He would be up next if we get any further in this inning. That one misses three and one. Barless being very, very conservative at the plate and making Sloan throw strikes. Barless chops one foul. That runs the count full. Three, two, two gone here. So payoff pitch coming. Sloan's at 42 pitches here and we're only in through an inning and two thirds. So this could be, could be a quick visit for Sloan. It could be, and lots of work for two and two thirds, or one and two thirds, rather. That one, Bob Barless legs it out and is safe at first. The hometown scorer giving the benefit of the doubt to young Barless. Tamani had to go far to his left to make the play, so it's going to go on the score sheet as a base hit. And that will jump Darius Barless's batting average from 188 to a little bit higher. Now Kyle Kushtu up. Batting ninth for the Royals. 174 is Kush on the season. Four hits and 23 at bats. With one RBI. I wouldn't read too much in the Kush's adding, batting average right now. As of course, he's just getting used to hitting with an, a wood bat again. Of course, he's with, at Canisius College this year. And according to the Mid-Atlantic Conference Championship team, the Canisius College, they went down to the Super Regional and unfortunately, didn't go their way, but they got two games against Miami and the other team, it was, uh, I guess, I think it was Al Alabama, actually. So teams that are perennial powerhouses, and they held their own. They, it was, games were both decided in the late frames in the Super Regional. That's Kush behind 0-2 in the count. And that will make it 0-3 and, and bring the inning to a close. Zach Sloan allows one hit, but strikes out three batters to keep the score the same. one nothing. the Royals lead through two innings here at Hastings Stadium. Back to Hastings Stadium, top of three, Damon Topley, the designated hitter slash manager for the Toronto Maple Leafs, leading it off against Claudio Custodio, who has been efficient as ever to start this ball game. And that one, a little bit of how do you do, Damon, from Claudio to get his night underway. Inside for ball number one. The 1 0 and popped high and okay? deep. Ish to center and Dalton Pompey, that's what you're here for. Scoops it out of midair and puts Topley down. A third of the way through the top of the third, thanks to Dalton Pompey. That one had a real chance to land in there and score a base hit, but Pompey had other plans. As we are one down here, Claudio dealing. And another first pitch strike from Custodio. That one hit and foul for strike number two. Throwco batting 500 so far on the year. I think Alan Ross referred to this guy as their version of Ichiro, so I haven't seen him pitch yet, but we'll see. So that 500 average will 
Have to wait as that one sliced foul down the third baseline from Taroko, and Hammond may have had a beat on it had it landed in fair territory. However, we remain 0-2 in Claudio Custodio, a third of the way through this third inning, and has just been electric so far once again for the Royals on the mound. Exactly why Sean Fuller and Dino Rommel brought him in this season. That one gets him swinging, and Claudio, another strikeout here, and it, he's making it look very, very easy, Neil, through the first go-through of the lineup. He's definitely got his A game on tonight. He's definitely getting ahead in the strike zone when he can, which is most batters. And he's not afraid once he gets ahead to challenge you out there to swing at something good. Has allowed just two base runners, one hit by pitch, one fielder's choice, that's it. Looking to bunt for a base, and that looks like it'll pay off in spades. Maple Leafs have a man aboard. As Vinicio is at first, and Justin Mara will see how much the ice pack and Advil helped between innings as he's back to the plate. He was down on strikes in the first inning, so we'll try to build off of whatever he saw from Custodio at that plate appearance. And try to advance the runner and tie this game up, if not better. Ethan Hammond blinded by the sun over there in left field. That one in there for a strike though. Owen won the count. Claudio checking at first and Terrasano, no play to be made. Mara waiting for Claudio to deliver, and now does, sliced towards the left field line. Hammond looks to have it and does for out number three. One hit, one left. We are halfway through three innings here at Hastings Stadium on a Tuesday night. Scott Fraser and Neil Srinwasa with you. The Royals with a one nothing lead as we will take a quick break. Back to Hastings Stadium for the bottom half and the home half of the third inning with Dalton Pompey making his way back to the plate. He found his way aboard by way of walk in the leadoff of the game for the Royals and later scored. J.D. Williams drove him in. It will be Connor Moore to follow and the aforementioned Williams to round out the order that is due up for Guelph here in the bottom of three. Sloan deals 
and finds the zone for strike number one. Zach Sloan finding a way to get ahead in the count. Struggled with that earlier in the game, but seems to have adjusted and it seems to work so far. And that one just missed on the inside as Pompey may have helped it along to be outside of the zone with a frame job of his own. One and one. That one well inside and low. Count now two and one and Sloan maybe overthrowing. Pompey with the bases empty as he leads off. Swings hard and misses to even the count at 2-2. Two -two. Slice foul, stays alive, 2-2 two two the count remains between Sloan and Pompey. That sun beginning to set over in left field, so perhaps strategy stays the same or it changes as the night sky begins to enter the Royal City. That one fouled and Pompey choking up on his bat with two strikes, keeps himself alive. That one laced to third and that should be out number one. A half-hearted jog from Pompey leads to the 6-3, or 5-3 rather, put out to get it started for the Maple Leafs in the bottom of the third. And Connor Morrow back to the plate. Morrow singled in his first appearance and was left stranded at second base. Back in the first inning and we will look to build off of what has been just a more and more impressive batting average as the season's rolled on his first year as a Royal. Morrow back up the middle, and that'll be a base hit. First pitch swinging Connor Morrow, and that pays off. With J.D. Williams coming back to the plate. Williams grounded out into a 5-3, but it was an RBI ground out in the bottom of the first inning, and with Morrow at first, and Connor with a bit of foot speed, able to take a bag when able. That one in there for strike number one. Morrow with three stolen bases so far this season. Williams waits on that one and that is a called strike two. Looked good from here, Williams does not agree. Wants a second to regather his thoughts and reestablish the zone perhaps as Sloan. A strike away. Checking Morrow, who they got thought about off. taking off. And Connor Morrow caught in the rundown, tagged out. Looked like he might have had a chance to get back to first, but what a good throw over from Sloan to get Morrow on his toes. And then Connor caught in no man's land for out number two. JD Williams now. 0 oh 2. Still without any pitch count here in his second plate appearance, or excuse me, it's 0-2, so a strike away, pardon me. Slaps one to second base, and that stab caught, and Great play bang, by Kalani there, like right that. there. One hit, nobody left. The Maple Leafs get out of it with some good defense. Their score remains 1-0 Guelph through three innings at Hastings Stadium.
through three innings here, one nothing the Royals lead in, which is shaping up to be maybe one of the most important games of this IBL season, Neil. With the Maple Leafs just a half game ahead of the Royals coming into this one, and it looks like it's going to be tight all night long. Oh, no question. It'll be definitely a tight one. Every time these two guys, these two teams hooks up, it's definitely a tight one. Unless it's at Christy Pitts and just somebody's having an off day there. It's like a softball enclosure some days. <laughs> Hitters park when someone's not on top of their game and sometimes unforgiving to pitchers as Salazzo 0-1 the count and lays off that one to even it at 1-1. One one. Roberts, if he had held on to that one or just had a better grip on it and it didn't look like he tried to backhand it, he might have got the call on that outside pitch. That one chopped and not in time. It'll be an infield single anyways. It, it was will a, be an infield single, and John Slazo is aboard. Scooted off the rosin bag off the mound there, and no chance for Cush to make the play when he fielded it. So Slazo, some fortuitous bounces, and Ada McCaskey back to the plate now. He struck out like so many other Maple Leafs in his first time seeing Claudio, so maybe hoping for some bounces just like Slazo had to get aboard and potentially tie this ball game. A hard hack at the first pitch he sees in his second appearance, misses for strike one, and a smirk from Claudio. That one laced and sliced foul into the trees above the Royals dugout. So a quick 0-2 count for Claudio in favor ahead of McCaskey. That one misses and maybe a waste pitch just to see if McCaskey would chase. Makes the count one and two. Claudio a strike out pitcher, so maybe at this stage of the game looking for another sit down, but perhaps a double play ball if he gets one. Misses to even the count at deuces. And again, shockingly the home crowd disagrees. The 2-2 from Claudio. Salazzo at first and not much of a lead foul off by McCaskey to keep himself alive and count remains the same. No Brando LaRue in the starting lineup at shortstop for the Royals should be mentioned. It is Kyle Cush over there. LaRue did leave the last game. As McCaskey down on strikes for the second time this evening. And one strike out away from wearing the collar. As Lucas Poscarino comes back to the plate and he was hit by a pitch in his first appearance. Hoping for anything but a repetition of that here, his second time out. Pascarino offers at the first pitch and misses, so strike one. With a man at first, that is Salazzo. Custodio checks on him and deals. Pascarino waves and misses goodbye to the second pitch he sees in this at bat. The count, 0-2. 0-2, one gone. Royals with a one nothing lead here, top of four. Beautiful Tuesday night in the heart of Guelph. Claudio, that one dropped by Roberts, but that will get Pascarino for strike number three, the second of his evening. And now we are two thirds of the way through the top of four Second here. Baseman, number 10, Grant Timoni. As Grant Timoni makes his way back to the plate, he reached by fielder's choice in his first at bat back in the second inning. And with Salazzo at first, a leadoff base runner, you don't want to put this to waste, but that is another first pitch strike in a perfect one from Custodio. He's definitely pounding the zone tonight. He just wants to get ahead and stay ahead of all these hitters. Say, so come after and come get me if you want to hit something. That 
one just does miss. And yeah, it's a good point, Neil. Claudio knows that his best stuff is usually better than most good hitters can hit. So you want to offer at it, go ahead, but I'm not going to dance around the zone. I'm going to go right at it. Dealing again inside, but it definitely, definitely found the zone. Makes the count one and two, two gone. Salazzo at first. Timoni at the plate and in danger of going down on strikes to bring this fourth inning to a close and swings and misses and Claudio Custodio continues to impress. We are halfway through four. Royals lead one nothing. half of the fourth inning. Sean Riley to lead it off with Guelph with a one nothing lead and Claudio Custodio a big reason why six strikeouts through four innings pitched and might go the distance tonight and Riley looking to build on the one nothing lead and give Claudio some run support. That one misses nowhere. It finds the outside part of the plate and that is strike number one. Riley has been quite aggressive at the plate so far this season, and that time laying off and not getting rewarded. The 0, the 1 0 hit high and deep, and when that ball lands, add it to the collection. Gone! Another high in the IBL. Sean Riley breaking his own home run record yet again. A solo shot from number 33 to get it started for the Royals. And Neil, for if you're Zach Sloan, what does that do for your confidence? It just makes you shake your head and go, okay, well now, now we got our guys down two nothing and I really can't give them another run. And we were speaking between innings about how Riley needed to lay off some pitches. He did so and it was a called strike one and then rewarded with a very, very fat pitch that he took advantage of as in Terrasano behind quickly 0-1 to Sloan. You think he heard us? <laughs> I think maybe Sean was listening. I, he might have had his headphones in listening to the broadcast. And so I'll show those guys upstairs. Exactly, <laughs> as in Terrasano waves at the second pitch he sees for strike number two. Sloan maybe trying to make Interesano chase for a quick three pitch strikeout, but Juicy far too seasoned for that one and lays off to bring the count to one and two in the bottom of the fourth. Terrasano checked it and knew that he should have waved at it. That one, a four pitch strikeout as Interesano is down on strikes in 0 and 2, 0 for 2 on the evening. Ethan Hammond back to the plate and what a Swiss Army knife Hammond, the left fielder, has been at the plate for the Royals. Hits anywhere in the lineup, and yes, he did go down on strikes in his first appearance tonight, but still well, well above 
the 300 mark on the season in terms of batting average. He took Sloan to 11 pitches his last at bat before he finally got the strike call on the outside part of the plate. So it's still a, a hard earned strikeout from Hammond to Sloan as that one swung on and missed for strike number one. Hammond back to third, and that is snared, caught, and played over to first for a 5-3 out number two. So Lazo still makes it look easy at third base, even on his rough nights. He made that look very, very fundamental and easy, you're right, Neil, and that was a much more difficult play than it appeared to be. As Noah Roberts, the catcher, back to the plate for his second shot at it, did go down on strikes in his first plate appearance this evening. As mentioned, Noah being very, very impressive. Otherwise, at the dish so far this season, a call up from the Silver Creeks came into this game hitting 200 with three home runs and eight RBIs, excuse me, nine RBIs as I check that. Also with eight walks, so he's really, really just getting it done any way it needs to be. As that brings the count to two and oh, two gone here. Roberts batting seventh, Barless eighth, and Cush ninth. The two gone. Count now runs to 3-0, and Zach Sloan doing a good job after giving up that leadoff home run to Sean Riley to recompose himself, but now in danger of a four-pitch walk. That one in there. Make it 3-1. and one. The 3-1 from Sloan swung on, waved at, and goodbye. Noah Roberts missed, and... Runs the count full now, three and two, two gone. Base is empty. Wolf with a two nothing lead. In what might be a game we look back on in a month or two and say, wow, how important was that one? Roberts takes ball four, keeps the bottom of the fourth alive. Jogs 90 feet and will await Darius Barless, who is up next. Barless playing third tonight. As mentioned, no Brando LaRue, so Cush over to shortstop, and that is the 8-9 hitters for Rommel and the Royals. That one falls in there for strike number one. Barless offers that, and that might have the juice. No, it does not as Roberts was off with the crack of the bat, but that will bring the bottom of the fourth to a close, not before Sean Riley goes deep yet again and extends the Royals' lead to two nothing through four innings.
And welcome back to Hastings Stadium. Top of the fifth inning, the Guelph Royals leading the Toronto Maple Leafs 2 to nothing as Greg Harrington steps to the plate. Castillo starts him off with a strike, and it count quickly is 0-1. Carrington flew out to left field his first time up. Batting 297 on the year. He lines this one to center field. Pompey is going to make a long run but not make the catch. It bounces in front of him. That will go in for a base hit. And the leadoff man is aboard here to start the fifth inning. Going to bring up the designated hitter, Damon Topley, now the manager as well. The DH, number seven, Damon Topley. Yeah, a full night for Damon Topley as the manager and DH. And with a runner aboard and no one out here, looking to at least cut this lead in half, hopefully. Showed bunt but pulled it back as the first pitch from Custodio went outside. Takes a hack at that one and fouls that away. Counts one and one. Topley now even with Custodio, who, again, six strikeouts so far in this game. He's wheeling and dealing and definitely is dialed in. If you're Damon Topley here, you just got to try to get that runner in scoring position and hope somebody else can cash him home. Well, Topley, a pretty well-established hitter in his own right, even with Sean Riley in this game. He is the second most dangerous and storied hitter in this ball game and in this league, so... Knowing that Custodio is going to throw him strikes, maybe the best chance that Toronto has in this game. Topley's adjusting his batting gloves and his bat a little bit here. Also known as stalling, but that's okay. He's just trying to throw Custodio off his game here. That's why the umpire went over and had a word with him. Offers and misses does Topley at the Custodio pitch to run the count one and two. No one gone. Carrington at first. P Topley, strike away from sitting down again. That to short will not be picked up by Cush and will get through as Carrington all the way to third. Topley fence is the runner and now men on the corners for the Maple Leafs. And UC Taroka back to the plate. Taroka 0 for 1 in the game. And went in the official score is an error. Cush should have came up with that one and just unfortunately rolled right underneath his glove there. Yeah, Cush again filling in for LaRue at short. Taroka, hot shot into the Royals dugout and a bit of an ole from all of them as they get out of the way. Taroka struck out swinging his last time up on four pitches. And Claudio efficiently getting the strikeouts to round, rack up, and that one misses to even the count at one and one. The one one from Claudio sliced foul and into the parking lot, and that might be our first windshield of the summer. Well, it's always interesting. You walk out to the parking lot anywhere between the game here, and there's always a there's a definite little gap in the in the parking lot because people have learned over the years not to park in those certain spots out there. But occasionally somebody's parks in one of them, they get dinged. This one, one goes off the glove. Outside, and that will be a wild pitch that scores the run. Carrington across home. It's now two one. Topley on to second. And it's a rare blip in the radar for Claudio Custodio. That one came out of the hand a bit prematurely to allow the first run of this game for the Maple Leafs. 2-1 the score for the Royals. That one slapped and foul. 2-2. Two and two. So the 2-2 from Claudio, no one gone. Topley at second. 
One man already across for Toronto here in the top of the fifth. Claudio misses to run the count full at three and two. Topley, the lone base runner. Duraco at the plate with a full count. 0-1 on the game with a strikeout. Claudio misses. And with first base empty, Taraka happy to take that and will take his base and pass off his equipment and be well on his way. The shortstop, number one, Jose Vencino. As Jose Vencino comes back to the plate for his third go at it this evening. The leadoff man for the Maple Leafs as the order has been turned over yet again. Vincino one for two, flew out in his first at bat, singled and left aboard back in the third inning. Topley at second. Vincino shows bunt, pulls it back, ball one. And Claudio who is near flawless through four innings in this fifth inning is starting to show maybe a little bit of rope-a-dope or signs of fatigue, who knows, but right now not nearly as effectively hitting the strike zone. That one misses well outside yet again. Roberts doing a good job to hang on to it. And not let any more damage be done with two runners aboard. No one gone, two and oh the count. The two oh from Claudio, bunt again. Showing and that will pop and roll foul. So now two and one. Again, some good patience from the young catcher, Roberts, to make sure that one did roll foul and there was no tough play to be made at third base to Barless. The 2-1 from Claudio, two men on, no one gone yet again. 2-1 the score for Guelph. Bunted foul yet again, evens the count at two and two. And to state the obvious, Neil, this next pitch, a huge one in this ball game. No question it is. He's just got to get a ground ball out here. He's got to get a strikeout. Give your defense a chance to relax out there and maybe even take a breather after yourself here. And he got him looking. Claudio Custodio doing what needs to be done. His seventh strikeout of the evening. And none bigger than that one so far tonight with Justin Mara, the catcher, back to the plate for the Maple Leafs. And Claudio Custodio and the Royals, a ground ball away from getting out of this one with the lead intact. Mara batting 306 on the year. He's definitely a Always a home one threat here, so you got to be careful with him as well. Pitch outside to see if Topoli or any of the base runners would move, and nothing doing, and obviously keeping it away from Mara as well. Wouldn't be surprised to see a hit and run on here as well, as Topoli doesn't run the fastest around the base pass here. So, In order for that to unfold, Claudio will have to hit the zone 2-0 with the count. Tomorrow. The 2 0 from Claudio waved at by Mara and missed, and that makes it 2 and 1. And yet again, it's bend but don't break for Claudio Custodio and the Royals so far in this fifth inning. One run across, still with a 2 1 lead. That'll even it up at two and two as Mara takes a knee and misses on that offering from Custodio. And as much as Claudio throws the ball hard, he is a deceptive pitcher at the same time. So that explains the swing and miss and knee draw from Mara. And then that one, the two, two popped up. That might be an infield single unless Morrow can make the play and does. 4-3 to put him out at first base. Mara down, two gone. 
Mara did his job, though. He advanced the runners another 90 feet now. Both Hopefully Salazzo can bring one in. Salazzo back to the plate again. And as you mentioned, yes, both runners advanced, but now with two gone, Salazzo needs a base hit. Salazzo one for two so far in this game, a strikeout and a single. First pitch misses, 1-0. and oh. I think Roberts just needs to hold that one in the strike zone a little second longer here. He might get that call. Yeah, and I mean, not that, not for nothing. It's not that Claudio is showing any signs of slowing down necessarily, but with three games in the next five days, four days, excuse me, you want him to go as deep as possible. And as I say that, that is strike one. The 1-1 one, one in the dirt. So two and one, Topley at third. Represents the tying run here in the top of the fifth inning. And after what was a slugfest to open up the Royals' home part of the season, we've seen some tight games here of late as that one offered out and sacrificed by Salazzo. And now the count two and two. Two on. Two out, and a 2-2 two -two count. Deuce is wild for Salazzo. And the Hastings Stadium crowd bringing their hands together, hoping Claudio can find the strike zone one more time. Salazzo sliced foul and hard behind home plate into the parking lot. We'll do it again. Salazzo checks it, but did not hold it off. He came around. That is another strikeout for Claudio Custodio to end the top half of the fifth. One run scored for Toronto to make the score 2 1 as we're off to the bottom of five. Home half of the fifth inning with number five, the shortstop Kyle Cush to get it underway for the Royals, who saw their lead cut in half in the top half of five. Greg Carrington scored for Toronto. Claudio Custodio got himself out of it, left two stranded for the Maple Leafs, and it'll be Custodio, Pompey, and Morrow due up for the Royals here in the bottom of the fifth inning. That opening pitch misses the strike zone for ball number one. Sloan's 70th pitch of the ball game. Kirsch waves at pitch number 71 and misses as it falls out of the zone. A similar strike number two pitch thrown. And Sloan seems to have Kush's number on that bender. So the one, two, we'll see if Sloan goes back to the well again. 
and does, gets Kush. After a first pitch ball, three straight strikes to sit down the nine hitter. But the bad news for Zach Sloan, that brings up the top of the order again. And with that, it's Dalton Pompey back to the plate. 0 for 1, he did reach by way of walk in the top of the, bottom of the first rather and later scored. Grounded out in a second at bat. Swings and misses for strike number one. Pompey swings and connects on the second pitch of the at bat. Does not appear to be deep enough and is not. Is that one an easy out for Greg Carrington at center field for the Maple Leafs? For out number two, and Connor Morrow back to the plate for the third time this evening. Two for two is Morrow. If Morrow can find a way to get aboard, Williams do up next. Sloan to Morrow, who swings and misses at a very good strike, number one from Sloan. That one well outside. Morrow too good of a hitter to chase that, so that evens the count at one and one. The one one. Waved at and whiffed at, and that makes it one and two. Sloan a strike away from getting through five. However, his pitch count climbing ever so quickly. Takes his time, resets, now ready to go in the batter's box. That one high to even the count at two. And Morrow, a pretty well-seasoned hitter in this league, so. Not an easy out, but Zach Sloan made it look that way with strike number three. As Morrow is down on strikes for the first time this evening. And we are one run separating both these teams. Guelph two, Toronto one. Five innings here from Hastings Stadium. Toronto, first base, 
back in Hastings Stadium for the top of the sixth inning. It's 2-1 Royals over the visiting Maple Leafs. And Ada McCaskey back to the plate. He has been struck out both times in his previous plate appearances this evening. So Claudio Custodio, who remains in this game and has seven strikeouts total, will look to add to that. And what a good start, a first pitch strike right down Main Street from Custodio to get the top of six underway. That one misses, McCaskey lays off and evens the count at one and one. Custodio deals inside, McCaskey lays off and checked his swing. Count now two and one. And again, just another packed crowd here at Hastings Stadium. Well over 1,000 fans in the seats. Down the first and third base lines included. And that is strike number two to even the count at two and two. And McCaskey, a strike away from his third of the evening. Chop to second and between first. And that, Terrasano took a bit of a Odd wrote to it, and Morrow had the play made, but Terrasano back to, unable to recover back to first in time. So McCaskey aboard with a leadoff single here in the top of six. Lucas Boscarino back to the plate. He is 0 for 1. He was hit by a pitch in his first at bat and then struck out the second time out. Went in there for strike number one, as per usual from Custodio. Out of town scoreboard, the Kitchener Panthers trailing the Hamilton Cardinals. 5 nothing after four innings. Cardinals looking to bounce back into the win, win column after letting manager Dean Costelli go a couple hours before Sunday's home game. A change of culture perhaps for Hamilton, but at this stage of the game, if you're not in the upper echelon of the IBL standings, you know changes have to be made. This Custodio ahead 0-2 here. And that is a three pitch strikeout, the eighth of the evening from Claudio on Lucas Boscarino. For second baseman, number 10, Grant Timoni. Grant Timoni back to the plate. He has reached by way of fielder's choice and struck out in his two previous at bats tonight. So. Another number that Claudio Custodio has had so far in this ball game. Timoni trying to bunt for a base hit and unable to do so as that has popped foul down the third baseline. 0-1 the count. The 0 1. Stodio finds the high outside corner for strike number two. The Stodio at this point has only got behind one, uh, sorry, three batters in the game so far. He's been ahead of every other batter he's faced so far tonight. That one misses well inside. So one and two. And yeah, Neil, it seems to be the same old song and dance for Claudio. Well ahead of batters most nights. And most often throughout every game that he's started. So the one, two here, McCoskey at first, moderate lead. That one grounded to short, that's Kush on to Morrow for one, over to interior, Sano, six, five, three, double play to end the top of the sixth inning.
Back for the home half of the sixth inning, Scott Fraser joined by Neil Suwasa. And Zach Sloan's night for the Maple Leafs is over. Ryan Wells will take over on the mound for Toronto. And the first man he will see is J.D. Williams, who will be followed by Sean Riley and Justin Interesano. Williams gets out of the way of the first pitch from Wells for ball one. That one swung on and missed for strike number one. Well, he's got a 5-14 ERA over seven innings pitched. It's his first pitch missed for a ball. Wells deals again, count even, and that one found the outside part of the plate for strike number two. So the one-two, Wells against Williams. JD could, could lay off as that is ball number two and he didn't think so either, but nonchalantly turns around and takes a practice swing and makes his way back to the batter's box. Not a very good sell job from Williams, no, I, but I nonetheless. I thought the plate umpire was going to ring him swing. up there, but I guess he said no, he didn't go around on the swing. So They checked it down at first, and the first base umpire said no swing. So two and two the count, much to the chagrin of Justin Mara behind home plate for the Maple Leafs. And that one will be strike number three, and maybe the baseball gods making one up to the Maple Leafs. As Sean Riley back to the plate the last time out, he went deep to left field. And Ryan Wells, as you mentioned, with that five plus ERA, knows he's gonna need to have his best against number 33 for the Royals, who comes back to the plate with a whole heap of confidence as per usual. And when he's feeling it, he's really feeling it is Riley. Good strike number one thrown. The book on Riley is don't put anything in his wheelhouse. Keep on the outer side of the plate. Hope he'll reach for something and get himself out. And that one chopped a short and on to first and off the bag and Sean Riley legs it on a single. The big man did motor the designated hitter getting on his horse and taking advantage of a bad throw over and getting aboard and keeping the Royals more so alive here. Just one gone now in the bottom of the sixth. One on, one out for Justin and Tirsano, who is 0 for 2 in this ball game so the far. Tirsano lays off a pitch that is well high and well outside for ball one. The Royals really need to get Antero Sano going here. He's pretty much the, the cog in the lineup as much as you know, the Rileys and Pompeys, everybody else get get the praise here. But if Antero Sano gets rolling, it's definitely a, <coughs> excuse me, a harder lineup to face. Yeah, definitely. And Juicy's just been thrown off by that illness that started his season out with a 10 to 12 day hiatus and still just settling in and again with Lots of baseball left to be played this season. Time for that to happen. And that one slapped over second base and into the outfield. That will bring Riley to second and Terrasano chugs down 90 feet for a single. And Ethan Hammond to follow now and one of the hottest hitters in this deadly lineup from the Royals into the box again tonight. He is 0 for 2 so far, grounded out in his second plate appearance, struck out back in the second inning. So the law of averages tells us anything. Hammond pretty well due for a hit right about now. Double play definitely very much in play here with Riley and Terrasano on the base paths. Hammond lays off the first pitch he sees from Wells for ball number one. Wells checks Riley, delivers to Hammond, and finds the outside part of the plate for a one and one count now. Hammond clearly disagreed, but squares back up and ready to face Wells yet again for the third pitch of this at bat. 
That one well inside, cut across the zone. Hammond got out of the way. Two and one the count. Hammond's got a big hole on the right side here. If he can poke one through, it's going to at least give Riley a chance to score from second base, but it's going to have to be well hit to get through. And just not quite high enough. A great grab by Tomani at a second base here. Just definitely killed the rally here and killed the inning. And as you mentioned, had to hit the ball high and hard enough and just not quite hard enough or high enough, rather. And that brings the bottom of the sixth inning to a close. Guelphs, Guelph two, Toronto one. We're off to the seventh. Back to Hastings Stadium, a beautiful night for baseball and an instant classic we have unfolding in front of our eyes. Top of seven, leading off for the Toronto Maple Leafs, Greg Carrington. One yeah. for two in this ball game. Claudio Custodio still on the bump for Ramel and the Royals. And another first pitch strike to get the seventh inning underway. The 0-1 from Claudio in there for strike number two. Like I said earlier, he had the you know Roberts has got to keep that strike zone, that ball in the strike zone a little longer. The umpire has definitely opened up the strike zone a little bit on both sides. Nothing wrong with a good frame job, and Roberts obviously listened to you, Neil, on that one. That one fouled back. As Carrington keeps himself alive here to lead off the seventh inning. And a one-run deficit for Toronto to a race here as we are at dusk in the Royal City with Guelph with a 2-1 lead. That one will miss and even the count, or rather bring the count to one and two. Sloan out of the game, Wells in for the Maple Leafs. Claudio showing no signs of slowing down for the Royals as that is yet another strikeout for Claudio. Gets Carrington down on five pitches. Damon Topley back to the plate now, the designated hitter slash manager. 0 for 1, reached by way of error in his second plate appearance. He's left stranded at third in that at bat. That one hit hard to short and just out of the fingertip reach of Kyle Cush, who dove across to try to make the highlight real play. But that one will land in there and go for a single for Topley, who is aboard yet again. The left fielder, number three, Yossi Taroka. Yossi Taroka back to the plate. He did reach by way of walk in his last plate appearance. Struck out back in the top of the third. So looking to try to keep this mini rally alive and turn the order over once again for Toronto. Taroka first pitch swinging. Morrow, easy catch and not 
enough time to get over to Interesano to turn two, as Topley was very, very close to first base. A wise, wise move from the designated hitter of the Maple Leafs. Messina one for three. He's he flew out to right field in the first inning, singled in the third, and struck out swinging in the fifth. Looking to keep the inning alive for the Maple Leafs here in the seventh inning. Struck out like so many of his teammates tonight and any opponent that Claudio has seen this season. That one outside. Just the fourth time tonight he's missed on the first pitch. That's for a strike. it, eh? That's it. The 1 0. Pull, then Moro in front of it. Over to Interesano, and that will do it. We are halfway through seven innings with the Royals lead intact 2 1 over the Maple Leafs from Hastings Stadium. Noah Roberts to lead off the bottom half of the seventh inning for the Royals. He'll be followed by Darius Parlis and Kyle Cush. And Reese Montgomery into the game on the mound for the Maple Leafs, the third pitcher that Damon Topley has disposed of here in this Tuesday night matchup. Montgomery's first offering to Roberts misses low and outside for ball number one. One zero -oh in there for a strike. Even the count. Barless watching ever so patiently and waiting and studying. I'm sure as Montgomery has just come into this ball game. It'll be lefty on lefty, fall by lefty on lefty as Roberts fouls that one off. Count one and two. So perhaps some gamesmanship from Topley, knowing it's the bottom half of the order, bottom third of the order rather for the Royals, and a couple of lefties do up so. The lefty Reese Montgomery called upon. One, two, sits down Roberts for a strikeout to get the bottom of seven underway. The third baseman, number four, Darius Barless. Darius Barless back to the plate. Barless one for two. He reached on a single in the second inning and reached on a fielder's choice in the fourth. Looking to get the Got a base runner across here, so the Royals got the top of the order coming up with somebody aboard here. Shows Bunt pulled it back, but it was a called strike number one anyways. Reese Montgomery ahead in the count on Barless. Cush loosening up on deck. Barless swings and misses at strike number two. 
A rather odd quirk in the schedule has the Leafs and Royals playing three times this week. Of course, this was a makeup game from the home opener. That unfortunately got treed out by the right field trees falling down in the season opener. Patent pending from Neil Srivasa. Treed out first and hopefully last time a game ever has that happen. And Barlow's down on strike, so Montgomery dealing since coming into this game to start the seventh. And Kyle Cush, the third straight lefty that Reese Montgomery will face. So again, maybe some good managing from the designated hitter and manager of the Maple Leafs, Damon Topley. Seems to be working so far here. Cush takes strike number one and Montgomery pounding the zone to get started for his evening. Yeah, the Leafs play tonight and they don't play again until Saturday against the Royals here at home again at Hastings Stadium. Then a s Sunday afternoon matinee at Dominico Field on Sunday. Is there See, that is a one, two, three inning for East Montgomery. The Royals with a much busier schedule. We will get more on that after we take a quick break. We're through seven, Royals two, Maple Leafs one. Back to Hastings Stadium for the top of eight. Justin Marr to lead it off for the Maple Leafs. And Brandon Dean's into the game in relief of Claudio Custodio, who pitched seven solid innings with 11 strikeouts, allowed five hits, one run allowed unearned. So another just gem from Custodio for the Royals. And when the bats kind of go silent like they have tonight for Guelph, it's good to have your ace on the mound. And Dean's coming in here trying to finish it off. The 1-0 from Deans misses as well. Count now 2-0 against Justin Mara. Deans dealing. Hasn't hit the strike zone yet. Mara slaps one towards Morrow. Over to Intera Sano for out number one. That will bring up John, Jonathan Salazo. The third baseman, number 17, John Salazo. Salazo one for three, two strikeouts and a single. He got stranded in the fourth inning at first base. And it will be a 
new pitcher that he's facing for the first time tonight and likely happy to see the end of Claudio's night if you're Salazzo. That one in there for a strike to get ahead in the count is Dean's 0-1. Roberts and Deans are not on the same page as far as pitch counts or signs here. So Deans got a little crossed up, but at least he had the clairvoyance to call him out there to get this sorted out. With a one run lead, no room for error. So a good call by the young catcher and the young pitcher to converse and get on the same page. And Deans had a nervous ninth inning and well in blast Thursday night. Loaded up the bases and then got his way out of it as the Royals defeated the Jackfish 6-5. to five. That one misses to even the count at 1-1. One and one. Yeah, Nothing short of dramatic for the Royals last week, that 7-6 thriller in Welland and that 14-11 win against the Red Sox in Brantford that nearly got away from Guelph. As that one finds the strike zone, make the count 1-2. and two. Again, the Royals winners of four straight after losing three straight, so right back in the heart of the hunt for top spot in the IBL. This game means a ton. Deans, Salazzo offers that at Hammond underneath it, out at left, and makes the catch for out number two. Well hit ball from Salazzo, but Ethan Hammond playing it perfectly down the line. Makes the catch look easy. And Brandon Dean's happy to see that one hauled in. Aiden McCaskey now the batter. He's one for two. Sorry, one for three. He's got a pair of strikeouts as well. He got left at first in the sixth. That's part of the double play that ended the inning. Dean's throwing, offering, and McCaskey challenging and missing for strike number one. The 1 swung on, foul behind home plate. 0-2 now as certain fans chase that one down and others run for cover as it's out of play. The 0-2 from Deans gets him swinging, but Roberts can't hang on to it. Down to Interesano to make the play and record out number three. One, two, three, go the Maple Leafs as Brandon Deans gets it done as he enters the game and sits down three straight Maple Leafs. Royals with a 2-1 lead halfway through eight innings. Back to the top of the order for the bottom of the eighth inning. Dalton Pompey back to the plate. He is one for 0 for 2 rather. Reached by way of walk to lead it off the game. And 
Nothing doing since, and Dustin Richardson into the game on the mound for the Maple Leafs, the fourth pitcher that has been dispatched for Toronto so far this evening. And he is their guy. They will ride him till they die tonight with a one-run deficit to try to extinguish and try to keep the top of the order for the Royals at bay here in the bottom of the eighth as Pompey fouls one off by way of bunt for strike number one to get us underway here in the bottom of eight. Definitely not a bad idea here by Pompey, especially the first baseman playing behind the bag here. If he can push it down the first base side, he's got a chance to leg this one out for a single. It takes a healthy cut. A tale of two different swings or offerings, if you will, from Pompey and the first two pitches he's seen in this at bat. And Richardson quickly ahead, 0-2. Pretty much what Damon Topley imagined happening when he brought Richardson into this game. And that is a three-pitch strikeout for Dustin John Richardson on Dalton Pompey. And that brings up Connor Morrow back to the plate. He is two for three, two singles, and a strikeout on his night. J.D. Williams will round out the order that is due up. Sean Riley batting fourth. Has a chance to get back to the plate. He does have the go-ahead run by way of home run earlier in this ball game. Back in the fourth inning, Riley went deep, and that was the most recent run scored for the Royals before Toronto cut the lead in half to 2-1, and that one misses for a 1-0 count between Richardson and Morrow. And now all of a sudden, it is one and one. The one one with one gone, Morrow versus Richardson. And that is a strike two, swung on and missed. The one two high and inside on Morrow to even the count at two and two. Two, two, Williams waits patiently as Richardson has already sat down Pompey in this inning. That one in there for strike number three, Connor Morrow looking. Morrow didn't like it, the Hastings Stadium crowd didn't like it, but nonetheless, J.D. Williams comes back to the plate with two gone. He is 0 for three in this game and has been a clutch hitter for Dino Ramel's team all season long. So maybe just waiting for his chance to make a difference. And that time would be here and now for J.D. Williams. That one in there for a first pitch strike. J.D. took it all the way. That one misses the zone inside, one and one. Richardson, the 1-1 one, one to Williams. Williams fouls that one off behind home plate, perhaps off a toe. One and two, the count now. Riley on deck. Should Williams be able to find a way aboard? The 1-2, two, two gone. Williams waits on the pitch. It comes, swings at it, and slaps it back to center field. That'll fall in there for a base hit. Williams around first, turning two, looking for three. Will on his way in, in there for a stand-up two-out triple in the bottom of the eighth inning. Like he's done so many times this year, J.D. Williams shows his patience at the plate, waited for a pitch from Richardson in the strike zone, got all of it, put it off the fence here at Hastings Stadium. And now with Riley on, de on bat here, you're pretty sure Richardson's going to give Riley a free pass here in this situation. You'd think with first base open and then some, Riley's already gone deep once, and we talked about it in Terrasano, who follows, really unable to find his swing consistently so far this season. So if I was a betting man, Neil, I'd say that you're bang on. This should be a pitch out to Sean Riley and a free pass. I'm pretty sure that's what the conversation between Justin Mara and Dustin Richardson was on the mound here. Hey, do you want to put him on or do you want to actually go after him here? 
but you're risking the chance with the speedy Williams at third base. If something gets behind Mary here, that's going to let the Royals get a run here. The way Richardson's standing on the mound, it looks like he may be thinking about challenging Riley, which could make for some popcorn eating and good television. That one. Whoa. Oh, my. <laughs> Knocked Damn. the helmet off. Best on best. And Richardson ahead of the count 0-1 as Sean Riley was looking to pump one. That was right down Green Street, and Riley swung as hard as he could. I don't think I've ever seen the helmet get knocked off like that before, but, well, heck. Buckle up, kids. This is going to be a fun ride. That one bounces and evens the count at one. The 1-1 one, one now, Riley and Richardson going head to head. Williams at third and Richardson decides to step off. Two gone. Guelph with a 2-1 lead here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Riley waits, checks, and holds off. And now ahead in the count, 2-1. And, and all 1,232 Royals fans on their feet. Two one to Riley as the crowd completely into this one now. Riley again, hard cut to even the count at two. Looking to make a statement and tattoo a ball out of this park for the second time this evening, but misses on that. Now two and two, the count with two gone. And Williams 90 feet away from doubling the Royals lead. That one in there, and it runs the count full just off the inside part of the plate. And don't go anywhere, folks. Full count, one man on, bottom of eight. Richardson first Riley. The payoff. Bounces, and that will put Sean Riley to first and bring up Justin and Terrasano. Runners on the corners. Justin and And perhaps a glorious golden chance for Guelph's favorite son in Terrasano to get himself some sustained confidence at the plate here and extend the Royals' lead. Well, two out of three of his bats tonight, he's hit the ball hard. He lined out in the first inning that a right fielder, a right fielder had to make a great catch to keep that one in the ballpark anyways, or in front of him anyways, to make the catch. And he struck out in the fourth, and then he singled in the sixth inning as they were talking once again here as to what to do here. And manager Damon Topley will come out here and join the conversation as well. But with Ethan Hammond, who's hitting well above 300 on the year, why would you load him up? for any reason other than trying to create a force at any base, but Hammond, not the guy you really want to give a golden opportunity to with three men on. The trainer's coming out as well here, so they're checking on Richardson. Perhaps a bit of gamesmanship, perhaps Richardson overthrew and hurt well, The himself. catcher's signaling from somebody in the bullpen, they come right out here. Richardson is done, he's holding Indeed, his arm. Richardson's night is over. Good break. So an unfortunate end to what was a great start to the bottom of the eighth inning for Richardson. And we will take a quick break. It's 2-1 Royals, two out, two on.
We are back here with two men on in the bottom of the eighth inning and two out, Justin and Terrasano to the plate. Anthony Mara on the mound after yet another pitcher thrown to the wayside. Dustin Richardson injured himself, apparently so, against that Sean Riley at bat. Two on, two out for Mara who misses the zone for ball one. Williams at third, Riley at first, and Terrasano. Two well-hit balls, but nothing to show for it in this game. Terrace hit a one for three. Would love to come through here with a single here. And looks like he does just that, Neil. <laughs> that one will score Williams. Riley thought about going to third and hesitated, but will still be in there. Safe that third, safe that first, and the Royals add one. Three, one, the score, and Ethan Hammond Back to the plate. And Terrasano gets to Mara. And the Royals double their lead. Left fielder number 28, Ethan Hammond. Hammond 0 for 3 so far this evening. Riley at third and Terrasano at first, two gone. First pitch inside, Mara misses. Hammond ahead, 1-0. Adam, the youngest of the three Mara brothers. Of course, when I worked in Toronto and got to hang out in the press box with the legendary Jack Dominico, who was no longer with us. Mrs. Mara, Mama Mara would always bring up the giant meatballs to Jack in the, in the, in the press box on Sundays. Those things were huge, and they had to taste good. I never tasted them myself, but Jack seemed to love them. Yep. Pitch misses, the count now two and one. Hammond ahead, looking to tack on to what is already considered a successful bottom of the eighth for the Royals. That one misses low, ball three. Noah Roberts due up next. As the Royals desperately try to tack another one or two or more on here. Hammond fouls that one off, the count now full. Terrasano at first will be off with the pitch. Second base open. The payoff. Hammer down to right field, and that will score Sean Riley. And Terrasano chugging his way to Juice third. Juice is chugging all the way. Safely. Choo choo all the way to third. It's now 4 1. <laughs> Two out RBI single from Ethan Hammond makes it 4-1 Royals and one has to wonder what would have happened had Dustin Richardson been able to A, sit down Sean Riley or B, remain in this game as Anthony Adamera has allowed two runs on two hits so far since coming in relief. And that is another first pitch ball from Mera. So and you really can't fault left. Mera in this situation either. He, he was going down to warm up and Next thing you know, he's getting waved in from the bullpen to come in and mop up here. And that one grounded out to first. That will bring the bottom of the eight to a close, but not before the Royals two, tack three, two more on yeah. and are now comfortably sitting ahead. Four to one, we are through eight innings from Hastings Stadium.
Lucas Bostino back to the plate to kick off the top of the ninth. The Royals tacking two more on in the bottom of the eighth to give themselves a comfortable 4-1 lead. Brandon Deans remains in the game for Guelph. As Lucas Boscarino back to the plate, swings at the first one he sees and fouls it off for strike number one. That one went off the camera, but everything is okay down there. <laughs> give us a little jolt. Sorry for the 3D action at home, folks. Speaking of which, we have a new online 50-50 draw. Half of the proceeds going towards our broadcast. So yeah, if you want to donate to that and keep us broadcasting live Royals games from home here. Jackpot already well over $500. The draw in the late later stages of August. So you have time to get your tickets. Get them early. Get them often. The more you buy, the more you win. Oh, and two for Deans here to start the top of the ninth. That one fouled off yet again by Boscarino to keep himself alive. Grant Timoni and Greg Carrington do up in this inning. That one misses, one and two. Deans and Roberts on the same page seemingly now. That one chopped to Morrow at second. On to Interisano at first. One down. The second base for number 10, Grant Timoni. Grant Timoni back to the plate now with nothing doing on the evening. 0 for 3. Did reach by way of fielder's choice in his first at bat, but has since struck out and grounded into a double play. We're looking for a little bit more success here in which will likely be his last plate appearance of the evening. Dean's dealing. That one misses the outside part of the plate for ball number one. Dean's looking much less stressed than he did in the top of the eighth when it was just 2-1. Those two huge runs scored make a large difference in this ball game's complexion as Deans falls behind 2-0, and oh, missing both pitches with this at bat. The 2-0, -oh, and there for a strike. The 2-1 from Deans. Swung on and hit to short. That's Cush over to Interesano. Not in time and off the base. Tamani is safe. And the Maple Leafs have some life in the top of the ninth. Greg Carrington back to the plate. Center fielder, number 15, Greg Carrington. Carrington one for three. As we have a bit of a delay here, the home plate umpire adjusting his mask and Carrington passing off the bat that was left in the box. And we are just about ready to get back underway here. To me at first, Carrington at the plate. Dean's looking for a double play ball likely and give this crowd what they want. And sit down Carrington if he can. That one swung on foul behind home plate and back into the parking lot. Where'd you park tonight? <laughs> Far enough away, I hope. A lot of balls have gone out there tonight. I learned my let exactly. We are brought to you by State Farm. Here. Yeah. We got Jake on speed down now. So the 0-1 from Deans. Tamani at first with a decent lead. Terrasano covering the bag. Deans deals. Swung on and popped straight up. Looks like that will be just a foul ball. No one really called it, so all three, Deans, Roberts, and Barless backed off. That ball fell in there and will keep the at-bat alive for Carrington. An unfortunate miscue by the pitcher, catcher, and third baseman, which would have been an easy out number two might be just the bit of life that the Maple Leafs need to take advantage of. He 
Vikings in control, 0-2. Has some room to work with. That one slapped Amaro over to Cushion 2, onto a Terrasano. Ball game! Royals win 4-1. And with that, leapfrog the Leafs in the standings. Now a half game up on Toronto with the win. And as Neil Sriwasa mentioned, a few more rematches to come in the next few days. Well, back at home on Friday at 1 p.m., the Canada Day Classic between the Royals and the Kitchener Panthers. Be sure to join us either here at the ballpark or tune in at 1 p.m. on the IBL website. On behalf of Neil Sriwasa and everyone else here from Hastings Stadium, I'm Scott Fraser saying thank you and good night.